Why has this affordable flagship left me confused? Also, Apple or Google? Who would you rely on for your health and fitness needs? And if you want to build a home studio or a work from home setup in under 5,000 rupees, how would you do so? All of these questions will be answered on this week's episode of Tech Today. Okay, so here's a device you saw on the show last week, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Fan Edition. And I'll give you a one minute verdict or even under 30 seconds. Lightweight, looks good, feels like a flagship product, but I am confused. Yes, Samsung, I'm a little confused. And that's what this video is all about. You know, purely from a marketing standpoint, I think it's a very smart strategy to have a fan edition in the first place. Samsung launched the S20 FE and that was quite a blockbuster release for them, a runaway success, quite a task cut out for the S21 to really up that game or level up. Now the S21 does everything right in all the departments and I'll get to that. But this whole niche created of a fan edition, what do the enthusiasts want? What do the fans want? Are we listening to our fans? This whole culture came in, I think, from companies like OnePlus, who said that they listened to fans and who were obsessed with customer feedback. Strangely enough, OnePlus seems to be going the other way and companies like Samsung are innovating in this space and giving you flagship level specs or almost flagship level specs on a budget and that is an interesting space to build on. You know, you must hand it to Samsung because the minute you unbox it, this feels like a device from 2016. And I'm saying that in a good way, and I'll tell you why. This is a device which essentially feels so light that you can easily carry it around with you. Sometimes when I'm carrying my iPhone or a big foldable device, it's not the easiest to pocket, it's not the easiest to carry. This travels really well, and the fact that it can give me top-end specs well, that's a big plus. You know, looks and other things aside, something that really matters to me is the software experience. And I know I've criticized Samsung's OS before, but this one is a version of their software which is running on Android 12. Android 12 is what we've waited for for so long, which Google announced last year. And I'll tell you small things with your nitpicking which make this so interesting. Because if you actually click on the middle of the screen, hold it and you go on the themes, how do you know that you're on Android 12? Because as soon as you click on wallpaper and style and go on the color palette, I can select, well, this green color palette and apply this palette to all app icons like I'm doing right now. And I see, well, everything has become that particular color. It takes the same theme, pretty much like a chameleon-like feature, which is very cool when you want to change things up and get some color and add some color to your lives. But that's about the software experience. There's all the right shortcuts. And of course, you can also get rid of some of the apps that you don't want, but largely it's quite a clean software experience if you're okay with Samsung's interpretation of Android. I know there's a lot of green in our background and I'm also wearing a green shirt, but this olive green is perhaps the most refreshing thing about my week. I am quite impressed with the colors as well. And this is a pleasant surprise. I would never be in the market and purchase this, but now that it's here in my hands, it's quite an interesting color as well. Moving on to the camera system, and it's quite a mighty camera system at that as well. This is very similar to the S21, its elder brother. Camera specs is something you're interested in. So this triple camera system actually consists of, well, a 12 megapixel primary camera with optical stabilization. Then of course you have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and you have a 32 megapixel selfie camera on the front which produces quite some interesting images. And then you also have the telephoto camera which is at the back. So if you're really looking for that macro camera which a lot of the flagships have, well then this doesn't have that. You know the primary sensor on the camera takes some good photos in daylight and decent ones in the night as well. I think the post-processing that Samsung does makes it quite a decent camera at this price point. But what's interesting is these very nifty software hacks. For instance, if you just switch on the selfie camera, it automatically knows when to zoom in and when to zoom out, when it wants to get more people in the shot. And yeah, well, it takes quite a decent shot as well. If Samsung claims they're giving you a flagship experience, there is a pro and a con. I'll get to the pro first, which is the display. No one does displays better than Samsung, and they've proved it on this phone. 
On this particular device, they have a 6.4 inch AMOLED display, super vibrant, super punchy. This is perhaps one of the better displays I have seen throughout 2021 and now in 2022. A 120 hertz peak refresh rate, Corning Gorilla Glass Victus for protection. The glass is largely flat, makes this kind of interesting to use and very easy to hold as well. And of course, it has an in-display fingerprint sensor and face recognition, which is the ways to unlock this phone. I personally thought that the fingerprint sensor is the best way to unlock this phone and that is also a small compromise from the S21 because it's an optical one which comes in screen but it does the job. Even the Face ID is quite decent. It's not an iPhone-like experience but it's good enough. Look, the con that I was talking about was the fact that under the hood this doesn't come with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 which is what a lot of the international variants would be shipping with and that's why a lot of Indian Samsung fans end up buying their phones abroad. This comes with what Samsung's been putting in a lot of Indian phones, a very capable SoC or a processor, the Exynos 2100, which I think is good enough to get the job done, but will leave a lot of Samsung India fans disappointed yet again. Now, at the beginning of this video, I said I'm a little confused, and Samsung, here's why. Well, essentially, it's the timing of this launch and the price. Now, in terms of the timing of this launch, it comes just before the S22 is being launched. So won't a lot of people be waiting for that? And now when it comes to the price, that's left me even more bewildered. Now, the 128 gig version of this phone is available for around 55,000 and the 256 GB version is around 59,000. You get some cashbacks and discounts of 5,000 rupees. But even if I was to buy this phone for 50,000 rupees, the, the lower end variant, I'm pitting it against the Samsung Galaxy S21 which I would get for a few thousand rupees more, which is the original big boy. So am I supposed to go in for the Samsung Galaxy S21 or wait for the S22 or pick this up? And that's not all. The Samsung Galaxy S20 FE, which was the predecessor to this, is perhaps one of Samsung's most popular phones. And it's available for a massive discount as we speak on leading e-commerce portals. For around 30, 35,000 rupees, you're getting a phone which is not largely different from this. So as I said, I am confused about this refreshing device. Now, the modern day smartphone serves many purposes. One of them is being the pivotal piece of your home studio setup. We have a few smartphones lined up over here on the Tech Today set, along with the fancy cameras, lights, and there's so much that goes into this. And it's a huge shout out and a thank you to the India Today Business Today camera team who makes this happen. But what if you're stuck in chapter three of the pandemic at home and you want to set something up? Maybe start your own YouTube channel or become an Instagram influencer or even attend an office meeting and look professional about it. How do you set up a work from home, home studio setup in under 5,000 rupees? Shivan will get you this tech jugaad. So, you know, people have spent ample amount of time at home in recent times and that could be one of the reasons why people have been extremely fascinated with this whole concept of creating content for social media. Could be a YouTube page or an Insta handle, whatever. But a lot of people are confused about what kind of gadgets or what kind of equipment do you need to get your ultimate work from home content creation studio set up going. So over the years, I've dealt with a lot of gadgets and here are some very basic things that you need and which you can buy within rupees 5,000 to get your home studio set up going. So, you know, to begin with, I feel the most important is to get yourself a tripod on which you can mount your smartphone. Everyone has a smartphone, just use that to record yourself. And a tripod is easily available online for as low as rupees 400. Now, if you handle with care, even if it's not a reputed brand, even if it's just a local brand, it will last. Just handle with care. The one I'm using costs about 400 rupees and it extends up to seven feet and it has served me well. One thing I'd like to add is that your smartphone it gets attached to a mount on top of the tripod. Now, the spring mounts are not very sturdy in the long run. So I invested in a screw mount, which I found to be much more sturdier. So these cost about rupees 280 per piece and I got these along with the tripod. Now, once you have your phone set up on the tripod, next thing you need to go for is proper light. 
because if you're not giving a good visual in your videos when you're talking into the camera it will definitely affect the reach of your video as well so i usually prefer shooting in natural light i still am old school that way but if you don't have good natural light coming into your house you can invest in a ring light now a ring light will cost you anywhere beginning from rupees 300 online the one i am using is a 10 inch ring light i didn't need a very big ring light for this because i depend on natural light and i got this one along with a tripod stand with a smartphone mount for rupees 1000 Now for every content creator it is very important that your audience is able to hear you clearly so i strongly suggest that you invest in a smartphone mic now there are certain brands one is boya one is mauno their smartphone mics will come in with 3.5 mm jacks and uh, the cost will be anywhere between 350 to 650 and it will obviously keep going up from there but this is a basic mic regardless of what you want to invest in the mic I strongly suggest that you invest in one because if you're going to use the internal mic of the smartphone there is going to be a certain echo in the sound as you can see now. Now this is the internal mic of the smartphone and when I plug the mic back in it's going to sound much clearer. There is less echo and more clarity. Now once you've recorded your video obviously you now need to edit it and package it for the world. So you need a proper editing software. Adobe Rush is a free video editing software which you can use on your mobile phone and you can use it on your desktop as well. But if you want a editing software with more features then Adobe Premiere Pro is one that you can subscribe to. This one will cost about 1700 rupees per month but it has everything in it. So there you go. These are some basics which will get you started with your home studio setup. Now again I'm repeating these are the basics because there is no end to how much you can spend and what all you can buy. But these things which I've mentioned will get you started within rupees 5000. Ayush, tell me what all do you have in your home studio setup? Those lights look really cool. Well Shivan that's quite a cool setup you've got out there and a lot of tech today jugaad at play with your setup and we started off like that as well in the lockdowns i did pretty much what you were doing and that was quite an effective way to belt out content but now since you asked and this is a feature on the S20 FE where i can actually get the cameras at the back and the front working together this is my home studio setup the tech today set that we talk about is one camera here one camera there and then of course my microphone and everything is out here so that is my home studio setup but well you obviously saw that shivan could do it in under 5000 rupees and that's quite a feat well that's essentially how we get you cutting edge content on this show on business today on india today and of course tomorrow's technology is explained today on the sets of tech today and there's so much more that we want to bring you this week but it's on the other side of a short commercial break see you soon what's up guys i'm your host ayush alawadi and you're watching tech today now i want to talk about smart watches because there might be fitbits and garmins and what not but when it comes to tech ecosystems there really are only two options it's either the samsung galaxy watch or the apple watch now the apple watch series 7 wasn't much of an upgrade from the series 6 which i have on my wrist but the samsung galaxy watch 4 was everything that android and google had promised in a partnership with samsung to really serve a worthy contender to the apple watch now clearly the apple watch is best in an apple ios ecosystem and of course the samsung galaxy watch is google samsung and of course fitbit as well all coming together with this avengers sort of moment to give you well a worthy contender just one second guys now that's one problem with the apple watch it keeps giving me notifications it says devina has completed a workout has she yes i usually have but the thing is today we won't only talk about the apple watch we're also going to have a look at samsung and google's concerted effort to take on apple in the smartwatch category with the samsung galaxy watch 4 Avinash is a body recomposition and transformation specialist and when I'm not being a tech geek I'm also a yoga instructor. So let's get into it right away. Avinash, what do you suggest we start with? So since we're looking to measure the accuracy of these certain metrics, 
Uh, I think we should look at uh, shooting up the calories and the heart rate. Yeah. So maybe doing a quick HIIT session and then after that we can jump into a yoga session to measure breathing. Okay, super. Let's do it. Alright, let's get into it. Okay guys, we've just finished a fantastic workout. So it's time now to take a look at both the watches and really understand how the metrics are different on each one and how each watch really helps us enhance our exercise. First of all, both watches tend to track most workouts automatically and put out reminders when you're being sedentary, while the Apple Watch is almost always spot on with heart rate monitoring. The Galaxy Watch offers a unique tracking feature. Individual exercises like bicep curls or pull-ups can also be selected with on-screen guidance and it counts my reps too. The Apple Watch is well known for its safety and emergency features. It notifies your emergency contacts if it detects an irregular heart rhythm. And both watches offer fall detection as well, which can be a handy feature for those with an active lifestyle. But a feature where both rivals score poorly is battery life. I could barely get a full day of use with the Apple Watch Series 7 and the Galaxy Watch 4. Offered a couple of hours more juice at best. In contrast, Garmin and Fitbit watches can work for days and even weeks without a recharge. After our workout today and measuring the metrics on both of these watches, what's been your impression? What do you think of the whole Apple versus Samsung split? What I was surprised to see is that the Apple Watch did detect the kind of workout we're doing and the Samsung kind of didn't. In terms of calories burned and the heart rate, I would say both were equally at par. About a 5% difference, which is normal. Another thing I would kind of look at since we talked about recovery is, in my experience, the Apple Watch doesn't have recovery measurement tools in, in terms of measuring your deep sleep, your light sleep, your REM. You have to download a third-party software for that, whereas the Galaxy has that natively. Also, battery life uh, being a factor, if you need to charge your Apple Watch or your Galaxy Watch, you're missing out on those metrics being recorded. I would again give maybe Galaxy the points over there when it comes to battery life because then you're not missing out on data. These watches don't only track your fitness and your exercise metrics, but also give you options in other health parameters like ECG, the amount of oxygen you have in your blood, the rest state that we've just been talking about. So it's really great. It gives you a really nice mix of options that you can choose from. However, a very important disclaimer is that this is not a medical device. And so if you ever have any medical requirements, you need a professional assistance, please do go for that instead of relying solely on a smartwatch. So guys, the Apple Watch 7 and the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 face-off honestly doesn't have a clear winner. It just really depends on which ecosystem you're more used to. If you have an iPhone, then the Apple Watch is great. And of course, if you're an Android user, then the Galaxy is fantastic. It really just depends on your preference. But let's not forget though that this time Samsung has tied up with Google, which means that they could tap into the Fitbit fan base, which might really raise their popularity. Let's wait and watch. Well, it's that time of the show where you get all your tech queries answered on Tech Today. We're always hoping and striving to build and engage with the Tech Today community. And you can always write to us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, DM me, and even leave a comment on the YouTube videos. And we will be scouring and rummaging through the interwebs to find your comment. The first one that we found is from Faisal Akhtar. He's asking me, will Call of Duty the game still be available on PlayStation? Now, I'll tell you why this is very timely. That's because Microsoft has acquired Activision Blizzard for nearly $68, $69 billion in one of the biggest gaming and tech deals ever. But what does this mean for titles of Activision, really popular ones like Call of Duty or even Candy Crush and all of these other titles which work on other platforms? Well, that's the concern that Faisal has. Will it be available on Sony PlayStation, which is, well, frankly, quite the preferred device here in India. And it's a valid concern, Faisal. As of now, well, just to placate your concern, the head of Microsoft Gaming has actually spoken and he said that all the players who are concerned about these games from Sony's platform being taken away these titles just because they'll be Microsoft exclusives now, well, it's not our intent to pull communities away from that platform and we remain committed to that. 
but this deal will go through by 2023. And all I can tell you is if you're a huge Call of Duty fan or any exclusive title fan, then enjoy it till 2023 because the markets are all over the place. This will also tell us about what Microsoft's plans are in the metaverse. Because if Microsoft has put so much money to build in the metaverse, the metaverse is supposed to be built on the principles of interoperability, openness. That's the future of the internet that we're all hoping to build. And in that case, would they actually be pulling out their titles from a competitor's platform? I don't know, only time will tell. The next question is from Abhishek Sharma and he asked me quite a crystal ball gazing sort of a question. He says, how much will the Tesla Model 3 cost in India? Of course, you must have seen my review of it on India Today and Business Today. Well, Abhishek, to answer your question, it's been quite a contentious issue for Tesla and the Indian government. And Elon Musk has been a master social media strategist, always putting pressure on the public narrative and really dictating it and manipulating it by randomly tweeting things out. We've seen what he does in the crypto world as well. But in this case, what the Indian government has said, to be fair, has been very clear. Firstly, the Indian government does not want made in China cars to be operating over here in terms of what Tesla is doing. Number two, yes, there are very high import duties here in India, which would mean the car would cost maybe double what it costs in the US. But the Indian government has said that you don't have to worry about those high rates. Come and make in India or assemble in India. Elon Musk wants to manufacture in the US and then import them to India. So that's where the bone of contention really is. And let's see where they actually set up shop. Now, Mr. Gadkari at the India Today Conclave said that the Tesla Model 3 will cost 35 lakh rupees and it will be made or assembled in India. Now, if that's the case, great. But the one that we drove exclusively on India Today in Bangalore on that nice road, well, essentially, that was purchased and imported by a local Bengaluru businessman and it cost him, this is what he told me, nearly 1 to 1.5 CR with all of its specifications, modifications and importing it via the UK from Bombay and all the way from Mumbai to Bengaluru. So that's how much it cost him. So clearly we need Tesla to come here at an affordable rate and more importantly from a tech perspective we need them to really fix the suspension and the ground clearance for Indian roads and of course build on the charging network because that's what makes Tesla Tesla. Well, of course, Elon Musk likes to reply to random tweets. So do we at Tech Today. You can always write into us at Business Today on these handles. And of course, Elon Musk, even if you want to reach out, we'd be happy to respond and have you join us on the show Tech Today. But until next week, this is your host Ayush Alavadi saying adios. <laughs>